Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you so much for joining me. We are already on episode 20 three of the Pet Parenting Reset. And today we're talking about puppy socialization. This is such an important topic, and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Uh, The reason that I chose puppy socialization today is because I'm actually starting on social media and I, I'm also creating a membership for it. So whatever is going to be the easiest way for you to follow along is um, starting starting now. By the time you, you listen to this, we have started a daily puppy socialization check-in. And what's really great about this, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more in, in detail about what it is and why you need to do it. But what's really great about this is that I find this is great for all dogs. Yes, it's it's absolutely something that needs to be done with your puppy. If you have just gotten a puppy or you are planning on getting a puppy, but it's great for all dogs. And here is why, whether you have maybe adopted an older dog or you've had your dog for a while and you don't know if they've been properly socialized, or you have seen signs that maybe socialization wasn't done properly as they, as they were a, a puppy, regardless of what stage of life your dog is currently at, this is going to be something really great for you to work along with because you're going to find where there are holes, like where there are gaps in socialization, where you need to, you know, areas you need to address things that maybe aren't quite sitting right with your dog. So we're going to find out um, through using our checklist that I have created for you where the pitfalls are and where we need to put some work in, whether you have a puppy or an adult dog, though, again, if you have a puppy, it's great to go ahead and go through everything and expose them to many different situations so puppy socialization is something that actually the the time frame that a puppy needs to go through the socialization process is from about four weeks old to four months old which means that wherever your puppy came from whether you purchased your puppy from a reputable breeder or you adopted your puppy or even if you know your neighbor down the street's dog had puppies and, and, and you took one, right? Wherever your puppy came from, socialization should have started with that person. Um, so yet another reason why it is so important if you purchase from a breeder that you do per- purchase from a reputable breeder. Uh, we This particular podcast is not going into all of the questions that you need to ask of a breeder, um, but there are a list of questions and we can definitely do another podcast about that. Actually, I think that's a really good topic for another podcast. Um, I have I have definitely changed my mind on that over time. I'm still in a, a adopt you know, kind of person, but I do think that there is need for reputable breeders out there for our dogs, um, to maintain genetic viability, um, first and foremost, but four weeks to four months, that is like the tender age, the, the exactly that, that time period in a dog's life where they really need to be exposed to a lot of things with uh, positive outcomes. So these, all of these experiences need to be positive. We're not looking, we're definitely not looking for negative and we don't even want neutral. We want positive experiences in so many different areas from being able to, um, touch your dog's paw pads, right? Doing, even doing massage with your dog, putting them in different, uh, positions, not aggressively, but so that, Anything you need to do as they age, um, whether j- just having, you know, veterinary checkups, that can be really 
daunting for a lot of older dogs who weren't properly socialized and who didn't go through these experiences and have positive um, associations with them, right? So when we're talking about um, putting your dog in different situations, in different positions, touching them, so we actually need to be able to gently squeeze their feet, right? That's something that, that might need to happen later on down the line for medical reasons and getting them used to different situations, even touching their nose. Um, Kim, for example, doesn't like her nose touch. So it's something we work on with her and we make sure that we provide positive experiences with her. Holding a dog in your lap. Not all dogs want to be in your lap and that's understandable. We don't want to ever force them to do anything. But again, another reason why socialization is so important. We want to expose them to lots of different types of people, women, children, men, really tall men with deep voices, um, people wearing boots, um, children that are still, children that are playing. There are lots and lot other dogs, other species of animals. We want to take them to parks. We want to take them out to uh, uh, stores that are dog friendly, like a Home Depot, right? So exposing them to all these different situations. But again, the most important part of this is making sure that these experiences are positive. So one of the ways I like to make sure that experiences are positive is by using a scoring system, one through five. And the lower the number, the lower the score, right? The more that area needs work. So a score of one is going to be a dog that is completely reactive, right? They're, they're overreacting. So they may be barking or growling or lunging, trying to get at something or um, even nipping, right? Uncontrollable. Um, oh, your, your dog should be on leash, of course, uh, only attached to a harness. I know we've talked about this before, but this is all uh, over arousal. This is all too much for your dog. And you've probably heard me talk about, especially if you listen to the um, Rethinking Reactivity podcast that I did a few weeks back, These, this is where our dog has reached an exceeded threshold, right? They have exceeded their threshold. They have hit their threshold, meaning like they they are at, an, at a point of arousal where you're not going to be able to reach them. You're not going to be able to intervene. They are too much into their fight, flight, or freeze response. Like we have to back it up. We have to get them further away from whatever that stimulus is to be able to engage with them again. So that's a score of one. Um, again, the lowest score <laughs> uh, needs the most work. This A score of two would be that your dog um, is avoiding something, uh, a person or an animal or a situation, even some sort of inanimate object. Um, so an avoidance is a, a, a negative reaction, right? They're, they do not want to engage. They're trying to, they're, they're struggling, right? They're, they're hiding behind you. They're trying to get away. Um, they don't want to approach something. They're very hesitant. That is not a positive response. That is, that is definitely a negative response. They are scared of something. They don't want to get closer to something. They don't want to get closer to someone. That again is something we don't want to have happen. That's a score of two. A score of three would be a freeze. So a little bit better, right? But still not what we want. So if your dog freezes in place, this is often a sign um, when that, that your dog is about to hit their threshold. So if they freeze, they are assessing, like their brain is working. They're trying to figure out, do they want to fight or do they want to flee? And so they're, this is, this is a, a point where your dog, they're not going to take food still in none of these one through three, they are not going to accept food from you. Um, and food being in this instance, a reward because we want to maintain positive associations. And one of the ways we do that with a reward um, is with food. So they are not wanting to explore. They are acting like, they, they might even be acting like they're about to fall asleep. And that is um, because they are just so, they can't make up their mind, right? Their brain is working overtime and they are just like, do I fight? do I flee? This is not where we want our dog to be. We want, because 
if our dog it has a positive association with something, they aren't this concerned. So, but we have the opportunity in this stage to pull back a little bit, right? And create more positive associations. So they can make the right choice <laughs> and want to be more exploratory and want to check things out and realize that it's okay. Everything is okay. And we can then again, reward and create positive, positive associations. Um, a score of four would mean that things are going pretty well. Um, they're calm, they're relaxed. They are able to focus on food um, as a reward. So maybe they're even a little bit playful. They still may be a little skeptical, not being completely like, go with the flow. This is everything is wonderful. Everything is normal. I'm happy to be here. They're like, they may still be a little, hmm, I don't know, but they're okay. So that that's good. A score of five being the best you can get um, is that your dog doesn't even need the food. They're just okay, right? They're just, they're, everything is great. Everything is wonderful. I'm calm. I'm relaxed. I'm playing. I'm happy. I don't even need the food reward because everything's already great and I already know everything is great. So that's the, the distinction between a five and a four is that the four, your dog still needs the food reward to realize, oh, okay, yeah, now everything is good. Like, oh, you're giving me food and this is a good thing. Okay, yeah, no, this is good. Whereas a five, they don't even need the food. They're already up and going and gone and happy and playful and wonderful, right? So using that um, scoring system helps to figure out where your dog is and where, what, like what work needs to be done, right? So again, we want to have our dog um, again, you know, if, if you're working with a puppy, wonderful, um, we're creating these associations and hopefully your dog doesn't have any negative associations thus far, <laughs> uh, if they do, or if you have an older dog that you've just adopted and you want to see what is going on and where, um, the, some work may need to be done. I, again, go, let's go through the same checklist because, we need to know what we need to work on. We need to know what our dog is concerned about and what they're okay with. And so going through the checklist lets us know and actually keeping a written journal. Um, even if you don't want to do the checklist, keep a written journal of all the different uh, people and experiences that your dog is in, uh, encounters and see, you know, go back and see how they did on it. Use the rating system. What is really, really important, there are a couple of really important things. One, we never want to force our dog into any situation. If they're uncomfortable, we don't want to force them into the situation because that can cause what is known as flooding. And flooding means that your dog is so incredibly overwhelmed with their fight or flight response that they just are, they're just there. They're like, they don't even know how to react anymore. They're just there. And flooding is not a good thing because it is continuing to add negative associations with something. Um, whatever, whatever they are being exposed to that they are not happy with, not okay with. So we don't want to flood our dog with negative emotions, especially to a point that they don't even, they, they can't even react anymore. Um, but what we do want to do is find where our dog's threshold is, meaning what is that point at which they're done? Like it, they're, they're barking and growling and lunging. We don't want it. We don't want them to get there. We want to find that point just before. Again, I, I often say when your dog stops in their place, their brain is working. What do I want to do? Do I want to fight? Do I want to flee? Am I just going to freeze? right? Am I just going to stay here in this moment and be like, I don't know what to do. When they are in that, when they're, when their brain is in that moment of making that decision, we can intervene and we can provide rewards through um, praise, through petting, through food rewards, through playing, which in turn creates positive associations with that circumstance. So, 
over time, we will be able to get a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer to whatever that stimulus is that your dog is either fearful of or unsure about. And we start changing the association in their brain. So that is um, basically <laughs> what pu puppy socialization is all about. And uh, again, I think this is a really great tool to use with any dog, even if you've had your dog for many years. Um, and maybe socialization is something you never really worked on, still go through this checklist. Go through with me on social media. We're going to be doing um, daily videos with me and Kim, um, who again is not a puppy, but we're going to see what happens and what we do um, if we encounter something that she is unsure about or that she has a, a negative association with, because she does. Um, when we adopted her, we found out very quickly she has negative associations with a number of things. So we will learn um, all the different things we can do in these situations and all a bunch of different situations to expose our dogs to. Um, so you can follow on social media or, and I think the best way to do this every day, once the videos go live, they will also be published in a free online membership, which you can also, this is where you're going to get the checklist. So to sign up for this, all you have to do, go to um, the podcast website, go to the petparentingreset.com. And on that page, there will be a link to sign up for the puppy socialization and get your free checklist. So um, that's going to be the best place for you to go to get your checklist and to follow along. And the really great thing is that it's all going to be in one spot for you. So every day it'll be uploaded with a new video and um, you'll get you know, to log, you can log in every day and see the video. You can get your checklist and follow along that way. So regardless of what age your dog is, even if you have a dog that you think is just um, absolutely perfect and totally calm and fine with everything, I think it's still a good idea every once in a while to go through a checklist and say, mm, maybe my dog hasn't been exposed to that in a while. Let's Let's intentionally expose uh, your dog to a situation they are not often exposed to so we can reinforce the, the positive association. That's important too because if, if we're not continually – oh, boy, that's a loud noise outside. <laughs> if we're not continually exposed to things – our view of them may change and we may be a little bit more concerned the next time we are exposed with them. So I think it's important to go through this occasionally. You don't have to do it every month, maybe every year, every year, and you know, like not too terribly often, but let's go through it and see if there are some areas where we need to work with our dogs. And this is the best way to do it. So that's in a nutshell, what, what socialization is all about, why it's important, how to do it. Um, yeah, I think this, the rating system, the scoring system is one of the best ways to to go about this type of work with your dog. That way you can easily look back at your checklist and say, oh, we got a two on that. That wasn't good. We definitely need to go back to that. Even if you don't completely remember because you go through a lot, like there's a lot to remember, right? You have it written down on a checklist. So make sure to go to the petparentingreset.com and click on the puppy socialization um, checklist to, to go ahead and get uh, access to the free online membership with all the videos and your checklist. Uh, we will also be going through this on Patreon as well. So if you are part of the Patreon family, you're going to get all of this wonderful information uh, just because you're part of the you're part of the family. You don't even have to go to the membership to get it. So. Um, if you're not part of the Patreon family, going to the petparentingreset.com and clicking on Patreon is the best way to get there as well. And of course, I am rocking my, if you're not watching the video, um, there you go. If you are, it's the Progress Over Perfection hoodie. You can get this in t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, uh, whatever you like. I This is uh, so far, my, my favorite. I think because it's a hoodie, <laughs> I, I went ahead and grabbed the hoodie because it's uh, getting cold here. It's it's winter where I live right now. 
but this is the progress over perfection design in the merch store again if you join patreon if you become part of the family which by the way for as little as a dollar a month it helps me to continue to bring content to you um, and you get some incredible bonuses like uh, content that does not you you get behind the scenes stuff you get extra that nobody else gets anywhere and and i don't know why i said and weird but um and <laughs> uh, you get a special discount uh, to the merch store that nobody else gets. It's way more than anybody else ever gets anywhere. So uh, definitely check that out for as little as a dollar a month. So with that, I'm going to end today's podcast. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I know you are an incredibly wonderful pet parent simply because you listen to this podcast, but also because I know you listen you listen and implement because you love your pets so much. So go ahead and give your dog and cat some extra love from me today. And until next time, bye guys. Oh, oh.